What makes a Pokemon? Their type? Their stats? Their move pools? Their abilities? Well, the answer is all of them. Stupid. Generally speaking, well-rounded Pokemon in all of these categories are the ones that find themselves being competitively viable. Like Avalog has some dummy thick physical bulk and isn't able to be intimidated, you could easily slap an assault vest on this thing and go to work nearly one-shotting Incineroar consistently with high horsepower and sponging hits left and right. Like, on paper, this thing is literally THE Lander Asteria encounter. It's a physically defensive ice type and can't be intimidated due to its ability own tempo, but being a defensive pure ice type means that it's weak to so many types that its physical defense is only half as effective almost all the time. Now let's take a look at Regieleki. Yeah, this thing is actually a good Pokemon in VGC, carrying teams on its back, but you better believe as soon as a Diglett shows up, it's gotta tag out, cause it literally can't touch that thing with a good moveset. Most of its move pool, with only a few exceptions, consists of electric attacks. Its great ability lets it bypass that by dealing incredible damage to even resisted Pokemon, but if they're ground type, it can't really do anything. But we're not here to talk about those two kinds of Pokemon. We're here to talk about good competitive Pokemon. Good competitive Pokemon with a fatal flaw. Pokemon where if you take their abilities away, they're basically nothing. Let's talk about Pokemon that are carried by their abilities. Obviously, this isn't a definitive list, there are nearly a thousand Pokemon at the time that I'm making this video, so I'm bound to miss a lot of them. So we'll just be covering a few notable ones. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe, it means so much to me and I'm trying to reach 100,000 subs before the end of next year. Every one of your subs helps. But with that out of the way, let's get into this. First up, we need to cover the dude that's literally exposing every other Pokemon on this list. Weezing. Don't believe me that Weezing's carried by its ability? It saw almost no usage until Generation 8 when it got neutralizing gas. And while I'm grateful for this guy for making this video possible and getting my guy Regigigas to the top tier of EGC in 2020, I need to cover him too. So obviously, Weezing's ability that carries it is neutralizing gas. This ability turns off every other ability on the field except for Mimikyu's Disguise and Calyrex's as one. Why not those? I don't know, ask your father. But this thing turning off all abilities across the board makes it crazy viable on teams that use Pokemon that aren't carried by their abilities. Like when this thing was partnered with Dynamax Regigigas in VGC 2020, it was over if the opponent led wrong. Intimidate Incineroar no longer could lower its attack, Chlorophyll Venusaur could no longer outspeed and sleep the Regigigas in the sun, Torkoal couldn't even set up the sun if it wanted to. Hey, Zacian even lost its free plus one attack on Switchin, so it didn't even really get that close to KOing Regigigas. Point is, this thing brings down everyone around him in the best way possible. But take that away, and what's left? A sort of bulky poison type that doesn't even get to use stab on its higher attacking stat? No, really, it doesn't even get physical poison moves. It has to use its slightly lower special attack stat to deal any kind of damage with Sludge Bomb. Yeah, it gets some decent support moves in Will-O-Wisp and Taunt, but it's only got 60 base speed, so it's likely going to get KO'd before it can click anything. 65 HP and 70 special defense also means that it's dropping to any psychic type that looks at it funny. In fact, it's carried by its ability so hard that I didn't even have to specify which wheezing I'm talking about, cause they're both pretty bad without gas. Moving on from literal gen 1 poison type, you know that doesn't sound like an insult but trust me it is, let's hop across the pond to gen 8's Galar. Grimmsnarl may be from a super power crep generation, but if we're being real, without Prankster, this and really every other Prankster Pokemon wouldn't be much. Yeah, these stats aren't awful, but Grimmsnarl wouldn't see nearly the same amount of play it does if it wasn't a crazy Prankster immune Prankster support Pokemon with more tools at its disposal than Hank Hill at a Home Depot. It's ruled all of Generation 8 with its insane supportive set of priority dual screens, Thunder Wave, and either Stab in Foul Play or Spirit Break. Prankster screens and Thunder Wave means that this thing can instantly cut the damage your entire team takes or slow down or even completely disable an opposing Pokemon. Those priority screens at its disposal actually make it deceptively bulky. Yeah, 95 HP is pretty high, but comboed with 65 defense and 75 special defense means that this thing's pretty mediocre at sponging hits. But once those screens go up, this thing can start eating stab super effective max moves. Now let's take this all away and what's left. A fake out dark type that can lower special attack stats? Oh wow, we certainly don't have many of those at home. This thing's stats point it towards being a physical attacker, but it's not great at this either as it's just some intimidate food at the end of the day. Grimmsnarl truly becomes the Uncle Rico of Pokemon as soon as its prankster is taken away, probably bragging about how it used to be able to trick an iron ball right over those mountains. It really lucked out getting prankster, cause while it would see some play without it, it's definitely hard carried by priority light screen, reflect, thunder wave, scary face, trick, fake tears, taunt, and, if you're real, attract. 
Also, just, just a quick note, like, every prankster Pokemon who isn't named Thunderous or Tornadus is carried by that ability. I mean, look at these stats, like, who gave Sableye these stats? Prankster didn't even exist in Gen 3, so this was literally just hateful. Okay, last guy on the thumbnail. I, I figured I would get these guys out of the way first, so there were some surprises in this video. Uh, but here we are at Gastrodon. Now, whenever I speak ill of Gastrodon, I pretty much get a 50-50 split on if people agree that it's really not all that good, or if it's like a top 10 Pokemon ever, but we need to be honest with ourselves. If this thing didn't have Storm Drain, no one would ever use it competitively. Yes, Ground Water is a pretty good typing having only that 4 times Grass weakness, but we already have a few of those. Redirecting water moves to itself and powering up its special attack with them is a pretty great tool, but when you ignore that, you slowly realize that it's about as bulky as a Whizcash, and how often does that beautiful specimen get used? Pretty much never. Yeah, Gastrodon has access to Yawn and Scald, but so do Swampert and Quagsire. Believe me, Gastrodon would see absolutely no usage in competitive if it wasn't able to wall out rain teams with Storm Drain. Okay, we're done with the thumbnail Pokemon, which means we can talk about these two silly little guys. Pelipper and Torkoal are going to share a spot in this video because they're both Gen 3 Pokemon that got access to their weather setting abilities in Gen 7. Prior to that major buff, neither of these Pokemon saw much competitive play. Torkoal was a mediocre fire type with good physical defense but not many tools to take advantage of it, and Pelipper was... well, it was Pelipper. But after this buff, both became top tier Pokemon. Pelipper was not only able to set up rain with Drizzle, but it gained access to 100% accurate hurricanes and rain boosted skulls, making it actually pretty offensively threatening. Next to Swift Swim Mons, it was able to set up Tailwind, allowing them to blitz past even the fastest Pokemon in games. Meanwhile, Torkoal on the other hand became a staple of Sun teams, being able to activate Chlorophyll Venusaur while being a super fast threat, and also covering for Trick Room matchups with its notably low speed stat. Not to mention, having access to Eruption meant that this thing could deal some pretty significant damage even coming off of that middling 85 special attack stat. Finally, before I get to the last Pokemon in today's video, I'm probably gonna do a follow-up video to this, like there are so many Pokemon that are carried by their abilities that I couldn't possibly cover all of them, so please comment down below what Pokemon you think I missed and I'll try to cover them in the next one. But the last one that we're going to talk about today is Shedinja. Yes, Shedinja was built with its ability in mind, which kind of makes sense since Gen 3 introduced abilities, but this doesn't make him ineligible for this list. In fact, it makes him the poster child of this issue. While there are Pokemon that don't require a good ability to function, this thing is literally the exact opposite. Shedinja is hard-coded to always have exactly 1 HP. This means that any damage it takes, regardless of how small it is, whether it be hail, sandstorm, or I don't know, even like a tackle, it'll KO Shedinja regardless of how insignificant that damage would be otherwise. The only reason it can function is because of its ability Wonder Guard, which makes it immune to any attack that isn't super effective on it. Even with this ability though, Shedinja only sees play in restricted VGC formats where it can rely on Pokemon like Kyogre to eliminate any fire or rock type that's able to threaten it. In fact, its highest stat is its base 90 attack, followed by its 45 defense, which, let me add, is absolutely hilarious. They could have given this thing 200 defense and it wouldn't have mattered unless it got copied by a Ditto, which honestly, I invite that. Please give this thing 200 defense and special defense so Ditto players can have something. Even with this immunity to all non-super effective moves, Shedinja is relegated to a support role, playing peekaboo with opposing Pokemon by spamming Ally Switch and Will-O-Wisp. Shut off its ability and literally any Pokemon can beat it 1v1. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as it helps me grow much more than you think. Also, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping keep the channel afloat. If you guys want to see your name at the end of these videos, please consider supporting me for as low as $1 a month on Patreon. And if you want to see some bonus videos each week, check out my $5 Patreon tier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.